everyone, I'm back again. We're going to make some Egyptian dragon soap. Now for this soap, we're not going to use any colors. What we're going to do is let the fragrance oil color the soap for us. Here I have Egyptian dragon fragrance oil. This fragrance is kind of warm and spicy and it also is good uh, for men and women. In this bow, we have a simple syrup where I've taken water from the allotted amount of water to go with my lye, and I've heated it up and put sugar in it. And, a, and you want to stir it and dissolve it really well before you put it in there or you'll get grit in your soap. Other than that, nothing else is going into these oils other than, of course, the lye. In this bucket of oils that I have melted and cooled to room temperature, we have coconut oil, olive oil, almond oil, castor oil, and palm oil. Now the palm oil that I use is round table certified. Okay, and so now we're gonna go ahead, I've got everything at room temperature, we're gonna go ahead and get started making this and see what we can come up with. I burnt my blender and now we're gonna go down the blender with the lye water. It's a little tight squeeze here, but we're getting it done. Get all that goodness in there. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and just blend. So far, so good. No barking. I don't know if you can see that good, but I'm trying my best to get this in front of the camera so everyone can see. Now, we're right at a light trace, but there are still some oils on top that haven't quite saponified. So what we're going to do is we're going to blend it a little bit more, and then I'm going to add my simple syrup. And what the simple syrup does is it adds a boost to the lather. This here happens to be my husband's favorite soap. And he told me I needed to keep at least 200 pounds of this. Okay. In goes the simple syrup. I'm not sure you could hear that, but that was thunder. Okay, in with the simple syrup, and we'll just go ahead. Now, I will say that this recipe is water discounted at 15%. I usually will not go any higher than that because it can cause soaps to become brittle and overheat, especially when you're adding um, sugar to it. And we're just not going to do that. I will also tell you that I did add sodium lactate to my lye water when it was cooled. Okay. This is good enough. Now, this fragrance oil does well in soap. So, it does not accelerate rice or anything like that. It usually does very well. And so, I'm going to go ahead and add that in there now. I would like to pour this at a thick trace. And the reason being since there's no color and that this will darken over time, it shows soda ash really bad. There for a while I was getting soda ash every time I try to make it. And I've made it before with a design, which I'll try to maybe take a moment and pop that picture up for you if I can learn how to edit. Now, I just started this YouTube video, uh, video channel. Um, the first videos I'd put up were just some treats of, you know, just watching me create some stuff for my granddaughter's birthday party for her little friends, which was a big hit. They all loved it, the glow-in-the-dark soaps and all the, all the little treats I put in a goodie bag for her friends. They all loved it. And uh, you can watch those and give it a thumbs up, and you can subscribe to my video, and I my channel and I would really love that. Alright, let's get this out of the way. Now I've already lined my handmade soap mold that my husband made for me. 
you want to know how to line your mold there are so many YouTube videos out there and that's how I learned that can give you tips and step-by-step -step instructions and, and they work out great okay so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give this one good stir it's starting to thickening up really nice here and I'm not used to using this big bucket but when my husband says 200 pounds of soap 200 pounds of soap it is turn it around so I don't get that handle and just start pouring it into the mold it's beautiful and yellow right now but pr I promise you that once I take it out of the mold you'll already start seeing it darken up and then the inside will still be yellow and then the more it's in the air the darker it gets until it turns into a really pretty brown and the, the thing I like about this soap is it lathers really well it doesn't uh, feel slimy I cannot stand slimy soaps uh, I've had some that would just you just can't seem to get the soap film off of you and I just I can't, I can't make soap like that this recipe here that I have I have used it several times and it has always been lovely and if my husband likes it, then it's a keeper because he is so picky about his soap. It's got a lather. He can't smell like a woman. It's got to be smooth and squeaky clean without making him flake off because he can. he's sensitive to, to soaps. All right, let's get that in there. I'm going to try to scrape out the rest in this bowl, so be patient with me, please. Like I said, I'm like a deer in headlights because I'm not used to talking into a camera. Almost feels like I'm talking to myself, which I, I'm used to doing that. You know, earlier tonight, my daughter came in here when I was prepping, and I was talking to myself and just going on about what all I needed to do. And she's like, Mom, are you talking to yourself? And I'm like, hush, kid, I'm in a staff meeting. I think I don't think I can save any more than that. Maybe off, maybe off the spatula. There we go. All right, that is done. Now I'm going to tap it, and I'm going to tap it right here where you are because I do not put my molds on the floor. I don't tap anything on the floor. That is just goes against good manufacturing practices, and I just cannot tap molds on a floor. I tap it on the table. However, we will give it a little bit more flair. I like to pull from the edges, bring it kind of to the middle just a little bit on this soap. Pull it to the middle. And then go down the other side and pull it to the middle. kind of give it a little bit of a whoops get off the sides I don't want you on the side give it just a little maybe I need to go the other direction just a little bit of flare it doesn't have to be much because this is going to be a beautiful soap regardless once it's sliced go ahead and get that extra on there or as my mother always says get that extra on there as you can tell I'm from the south I can't help the way I talk. All right. And there you have it. Egyptian dragon soap. God, it smells so good. And we'll be back. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. It's been um, about 14 hours since... I did this soap. It's already hard due to the sodium lactate and the combinations of the oils that I use. It hardens pretty quick. But as you can tell, I'm getting a little bit of soda ash and that's probably due to the humidity because we had some really bad storms blow in right before I started making the soap. And it was really humid and hot here. You know, I do live in Texas, so 
it's to be expected. I've already cut a couple um, slices here and I won't subject you to me cutting the entire loaf because it's just it's a plain soap and there's not really much to see other than it's a little bit darker than it was yesterday but it's still not what it's going to be. I'm going to show you a soap that is already cured and it's the same exact soap and you can tell the difference. The scent is so lovely. It smells good for men and women. It's a warm scent. Um, it's got, I think it's got like dragon's blood in it and a few other notes that gives it that Egyptian dragon smell. And if you're wondering why I am wearing gloves to cut this soap, well, other than the fact that it is good manufacturing practice, um, I have a cut on my finger. Yesterday I was cutting some potatoes in a one of those cutters that you put the potatoes on top and you smash it down through this blade grade and and it makes french fries. Well, I thought I'd be smart and I'd smash it with my hand instead of the top that comes with it and ouch, got the tip of my finger. It happens. Sometimes, just don't think before I do something. <laughs> God, this is cutting so beautiful. It's just, it's tight, it's hard to get out. And I like to push this back before I make my next cut so that when I lift this up, the string doesn't go back over it. But you can see that they're turning out very nice and lovely. And I won't subject you to the whole thing. This is my Egyptian dragon soap and I'm going to let it cure for at least four weeks. I like to go up to six. It makes for a harder bar. Uh, but I, like, I will go ahead and uh, make them available at four because usually by the time they get used, it's been six weeks, but I at least let them go for before um, I let them go out my door. Most of these will probably be used by my husband, who has told me I need 200 pounds of soap on standby for him at all times. I don't understand why he needs so much soap, but you know what they say, cleanliness is next to godliness, so I guess he thinks he's a god. If you enjoyed this video, please go down there and subscribe to my channel and give me a big thumbs up. As you can see, I don't have many videos at this point, but I'm working on it and I'm sure that I'll develop my style and my quirks and my true personality will come out in time. But y'all have a nice day and enjoy.